Hey! Yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Red Hood, The Lost Days. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Judd Winnick. Judd Winnick I've always found to be a fascinating writer, in comics and also with the fan base. Because with the fans, you either love them or you hate them. And his stories often fell on either end of the spectrum. They're either really good or they're really bad. With Judd Winnick, I've always found him to be a writer that works best when he's given a plan, when he's put on a leash. When you tell him what characters to use, what kind of stories to write, and exactly what direction you want to go. He does a very good job with it. But when you allow him free range, he tends to use characters incorrectly, and his stories can be jumbled up and maybe even a little too drawn out. Again, it's not because he's a bad writer, it's just Judd Winnick works best under different circumstances than, say, Jeff Johns or Grant Morrison or Paul Dini. It's just who he is as a writer. However, the one character and the one story that Judd Winnick can always write is the story of Jason Todd, whether he's on that leash or not. And it's quite fascinating because, just like Judd Winnick, Jason Todd is either loved or hate by people. But there's one thing you can't ignore, and that is Jason Todd. He's back and he's here to stay. He's even getting his own title once DC relaunches his comics, with Starfire and Red Arrow, or Arsenal, which is still perplexing me why those two are teaming up with him. But whatever, I'm not going to talk about it, I'm not going to complain. But Jason Todd is back, and he's here to stay. And like I said before, the one thing that Jed Wood can consistently write good is Jason Todd. It's almost like it's his character. I mean, it's not like he made Jason Todd, it's not like he's the creator, but Jason Todd was gone for a long extended period of time, and it really was Judd Winnick who brought Jason Todd back, if you don't count Hush, but Jason Todd wasn't originally conceived to come back then. It was just kind of retconned in. So the question is this, we have a whole comic dedicated to Jason Todd, dedicated to the Red Hood. And it's a comic filling in all those ooey-gooey gaps that we have in the revival all the way up until him becoming Red Hood. The question is this, will Judd want to consistently write Red Hood well, or will unfortunately the character fall into his limbo of needing to be put on a leash in order for the stories to be good? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. Let's start things off with the story itself. The story is actually pretty plain and pretty simple. Some of the dialogue is actually taken from the Red Hood story, seeing that we got some flashbacks here and there. But this is set right after Jason Todd died and was revitalized and brought back to life all the way up till Hush. And we see the training of Jason Todd, him working with Talia Ghul to fulfill his goals. Along the way, he takes some detours, and we get to see exactly how he feels about the Joker, how he feels about Batman, and everything that happens in between. On those detours that I just mentioned, he meets up with these individuals that teach him how to fight, how to kill, how to do certain things. However, just because they're teaching him doesn't mean he has to like them. These people are scumbags. Now, though Jason Todd is very much an anti-hero, he's still a hero. And he can't allow these scumbags to walk the earth. And he needs to make the place a lot better with them not being there. So the question is this. Will this really fill in the gaps? Will this really make Jason Todd's return plausible and believable and actually good? Or is it just going to be a story talking about him running around and getting trained? Let's get on to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Well, one thing I really liked about this was the portrayal of Talia Ghul. Recently, we've been getting Talia as a psychotic bitch with no redeemable qualities. And please, we all know that's the case. Ever since Grant Morrison took over with Talia, he's just turned her into an evil psychotic path. But... In this, we get a little bit of gentler side of Talia, a character that is very much a bad person who has redeemable qualities. She cares for people, and you can feel that she genuinely cares for Jason. Whether or not her motives originally was for Jason or not, towards the end of the comic, you see the subtle mother-like figure towards him, which is really odd when they shag. Yes, Jason gets with Talia. I'm not really ruining anything there for you. 
But it's really nice to see that she has redeemable qualities. Again, this is just before that she reveals Damien to be around and before she goes psychotically, psychopathically evil. But it's good to see Talia painted in this light. Jason is, for the most part, written well. We get a little bit more, more votive motivation with him. We get to see him train a bit. And we I, I like during the whole entire story, he had a red hood on. You'll notice that. But the thing is, is that he wasn't portrayed fantastically, just well. I feel as though he's portrayed better in Under the Hood. Uh, but for the most part, he is portrayed okay. The action in this is good, and I do like that they go into detail about the training. Him actually learning how to kill, how to learn to make bombs, how to do this and that. And the inner dialogue with Jason, although he wasn't portrayed fantastically, the inner dialogue was nice. Bad. The big bad to this is that there is no big bad to this. It's just Jason kind of going around and taking out bad guys. There's no overarching villain in this. No real antagonist. It's Jason working around, trying to figure out what he's going to do and how he's going to do it, and beating up bad guys along the way. Even though the Joker makes an appearance, it's not enough to consider him the antagonist. You can even say Ra's al Ghul could be, but he only shows up really at the beginning. I mean, by the end of this book, Ra's al Ghul had been killed off. Death and uh, Death and Maidens story arc, if you Batman story arc. But the thing is, is that um, there's no real bad guy to this. It's just Jason kind of going around. Other than that, other than that, on a whole. This was okay. Was it the finest thing that Judd Winnick has ever done? No. Was it the worst thing Judd Winnick has ever done? No. Again, Judd Winnick is one of those writers that falls on either end of the spectrum. And with this, it falls kind of dead center. It's good, but it's not good enough to really recommend people go out and buy if they're not a Jason Todd fan. Now, see, I'm a fan of Jason Todd. I like him. I find him to be an interesting, fascinating character. And I don't get my period whenever people talk about how, oh, no, he was brought back to life when we voted him to get killed off. Yeah, you voted him to get killed off, but you never voted him to stay dead. But the thing is, is that Jason Todd is a fun character for me, so I enjoyed this probably a little bit more than I should have. If you're not a big Jason Todd fan, or if you're impartial on the character, you're probably not going to enjoy this quite as much as I did. So on whether or not you should get it, it really comes down to that. Are you a Jason Todd fan or not? If you are, it's only a $14 buy, $14.99. So it's not that bad for the amount of issues you get, which I believe is 4 or 5 It's actually a pretty good deal. If you're not a Jason Todd fan... Don't get this at all. Again, Judd Winnick is always a perplexing writer because he either does really good or really bad. And I really hope he is put on a leash when it comes down to the new Catwoman series. Because I love Catwoman to death and he better write that good. I'm watching you, Judd Winnick. I'm watching you. You may have tickled my fancy with Under the Hood and some of the Outsider stuff. But I know what you did with Power Girl. I know what you did with Outsiders later on. I'm watching you. Okay? Just sending that out there. But no, in all honesty, you know whether or not you want this. You knew whether or not you wanted it before I even reviewed it. But on a whole, I would give it a C ranking. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F. It would get a C. Dead center. That said, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.